Hey everyone, I wanna quickly run you through this bookkeeping template that I built out in Google Sheets. Before I run through each tab, I just wanna kinda of highlight some of the key things that you'll be getting out of this template. So starting off here with the analytics tab, you're gonna see your month over month performance in terms of revenue and expenses, and of course, profit as well. If we keep scrolling down, you're gonna see a little bit more data on your sales performance, who your top customers are based on revenue, and then the percentage breakdown between those customers. You're gonna see a little dashboard on your accounts receivable and how often you're collecting, any aging AR that's overdue in the various buckets. You're gonna see your top performing products in terms of highest profit margin, uh, lowest profit margin, and then also just the top selling products in general in terms of revenue. And then down below, you're gonna see um, a little bit more detail on your expenditures month over month and spend by category. This is all automated. So as you go through each tab and enter, enter your expenses, sales, you know, bills, expenses, payable, so on and so forth, this is all gonna populate automatically. Some other key highlights from this bookkeeping template you're going to be able to manage your inventory. Um, so if we click here, you're going to see you just enter your products, the opening quantity, opening cost, that calculates the opening value. And then uh, quantity in and quantity out is automatically calculated. So quantity in would be any purchases you make through the purchases tab, inventory purchases tab, and it'll automatically bring in that quantity. And then quantity out is any items that you sell it'll automatically deduct that quantity based on cost of goods sold, and it'll give you the total quantity left. It also auto-calculates the average cost per unit, average price per unit, and that's how profit margin is, is determined. And you can see that up top here as well. A couple of other things I'll, I'll quickly highlight before I go into each tab. There's a bank reconciliation available here. Um, and then everything's automated once you input your transaction. So for example, as you input data from a sales expenses journal entry standpoint you're going to see this trial balance auto populate so it's always good to uh, check back on this tab to make sure total debits equal total credits because this trial balance also drives the balance sheet that auto populates here so i created that for you and then also the profit and loss statement as well that i've created and auto populates so you don't have to worry about that so i just want to kind of highlight some of the key features now, if we go through how to actually use this, if we start off here in the settings tab, first thing we're going to do is select our currency. So you can see there's, I think there's like over 30 currencies that I've added here. But if you switch your currency, for example, to let's say euros, then this currency will, will apply across all tabs. So it's all automated. So for example, if I click into sales and AR, you'll see, you know, you can even just see up top, like the euro currency is applied now. So changing the currency here applies it everywhere. The next thing is the fiscal year. So all you need to do here is really enter the start of your fiscal year and it'll automatically calculate the end by adding an additional 12 months. So to highlight this in action, right now I'm in a Jan to 31st, Jan 1st, December 31st year end. If I click into the analytics tab, you'll see that my overall performance month over month is tracked during that uh, fiscal period. If I go and change this, let's say I have instead a March 31st year end, so April 1st fiscal year, goes from April 1st to March 31st. If I go back to the analytics tab, you'll see now I'm from April 1st to March 2024. Of course, I don't have data for Jan 2024, Feb, and March, uh, but as I populate that, you'll see this updates automatically. And that applies to all other tabs as well. So if I go to sales and AR, you'll see here I've got data starting from April. I just don't have data from Jan, Feb, March in this dashboard either. So all of that is automated. I'm going to go ahead and switch that back to Jan first. Other things here, tax rates. So any tax rates that apply on the collection of taxes or even when you purchase anything and have to pay tax on it, you can just enter all the various rates that might apply. And then those will show up in other tabs to auto-calculate your uh, taxes. And then down here, I've just added a few other notes for each tab to give a little bit more background and insight so you can go through and, and read through that. The next thing we want to do in terms of setup is head over here to the customers tab. So this is kind of highlighting all of your customers and their information along with total sales and total items ordered. 
Total sales and total items ordered, you can see here, this is a formula. And look, if you look in the top left-hand corner, so it'll pull all of the sales data for your customer and then populate it into these pie charts, showcasing total sales by customer and then total orders, items ordered by customer as well. But yeah, you can go in here, enter your customer's detail, uh, your customer's details, and then it'll auto pick populate the sales information here for, here for you accordingly. Next, the account section. So this is where you're gonna manage your chart of accounts. So you can see here, I'll talk about this formula in a second, but down below you'll see all of your assets, liability, equity, revenue, and expense accounts. I looked online at what, are the, what the sort of common accounts were. So I think I've covered it all. So you shouldn't need to add any additional ones. You can certainly rename any existing ones. If you are going to add additional, additional ones, just be careful with formatting because these accounts then impact the trial balance, the balance sheet, and the profit and loss statement. So just be mindful of that. But I think for the most part, this should cover what you need. Just rename if you, if you need to. But in terms of what to do here, if you have an opening balance for any of these accounts, just enter them here in the opening balance column and then as of date. Some of these line items auto populate. So for example, the inventory balance auto populates from the inventory products and inventory tab um, or the inventory management tab, I should say. And the owner's capital auto, auto populates or auto calculates based on this formula above. So just be mindful of, of some of those notes. But in this case, like opening assets minus opening liabilities and retained earnings equals opening capital. If you don't have opening balances, totally fine. Just skip through this. But uh, if you do, you can go ahead and enter them there. And then they will auto-populate into your trial balance and balance sheet. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, the next section, inventory management. So this is where you're going to go in and enter all of your products, services, or anything that you offer and sell as part of your business. So you can see here, I have a a fictitious coffee business. So I've set up a bunch of the coffee products that I sell. You can select the type of product they are. So product, service, digital, other, you can add other options if you'd like. Enter the opening quantity if there is any. Enter the, the cost per unit, and then that'll give you the opening value. And so this value here should equal, if I go back to the account section, yeah, you can see here 5255. It'll bring that in automatically from the inventory opening balance that you see here. If I keep scrolling over here, quantity in, this is going to auto populate from the inventory purchases tab. So anytime you purchase inventory from a vendor or supplier, it'll bring in that quantity automatically into this quantity in column. And then quantity out, it'll auto populate uh, based on the sales and AR tab. So any sales you make, it'll take that quantity and automatically reduce it for you here to bring you at your quantity available. And then based on your purchases and your sales, it'll calculate the average cost per unit, average price per unit, and then it'll give you the overall profit mar margin. And that's what drives these dashboards or reports up top. So on the left, you see your you know top products in terms of highest profit margin, uh, lowest profit margin products, low stock items based on quantity available, and then high stock items. So this is a great indication of what you need to reorder, or maybe maybe products that just aren't selling very well, and maybe you don't need to order too many of. Okay, so the next tab I'll go through is the sales and accounts receivable tab. So this is where you can track all of your sales for the year, for the fiscal year. And whether these sales are due on receipt, net 15, net 30, 45, 60. So if you have customers that pay on account or, or have special terms, you can enter that information here. It all calculates the due date for you automatically. You can see here in terms of other things to fill out, revenue category. So based on the accounts that, you've, that we've outlined from a revenue standpoint, they will appear here. So that'll appear on the income statement. You can select the customer that this sale is being made to, and then the product that you're selling to them. You'd go ahead and then enter the quantity, price, it'll auto -cal calculate revenue, and then you can select the appropriate tax rate, it'll calculate, auto calculate the tax collected, bring you to the total, and then you pretty much need to enter the cash received. So for those you know, sales on terms, you just specify how much of that cash you've received, and then it'll calculate the remaining balance for you. 
for cost of goods sold purposes, you'd go ahead and enter the cost per unit of the product that you sold. So, you know, in this case, I sold, I sell, sell, I made a sale of the original blend for eight bucks. But how much of that original blend cost me? Two bucks. And then I'll give you the, the total cost of this item. And all of this will then auto populate these reports up top. So, month over month revenue, top selling products, and then your aging accounts receivable report. So, for those that haven't paid yet, or, you know, actually break down these buckets. So, current meaning any current invoices that are not overdue, but you're awaiting payment, uh, invoices that are one to 30 days overdue, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, 90 days plus. And if you use this filter up top and let's say you clear out this filter and select 90 days plus, it'll filter all those customers and orders or sales, I should say, that are 90 days overdue that you can then follow up on because they haven't paid yet. Or maybe you just haven't updated the cash received, so you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to select all here. Another thing I'll highlight on each of these tabs where input is required, you'll see there's a bunch of these hidden columns up top. And I did this for uh, a specific reason. So if I open these out, one second, there we go. If I open, open these out, what's happening is it's automatically tracking the accounting impact of that transaction. So it's automatically tracking the revenue impact, sales tax payable, because you're collecting sales tax and uh, on the sale. So it's going to go to that liability account, accounts receivable, if the sale is on, on terms, cash received, and cost of goods sold. So you don't have to worry about the accounting side. It's automatically doing this for you based on these formulas. I've put a note in here saying, you know, make sure not to manually adjust this unless you, you kind of know what you're doing. But even then, I wouldn't touch these um, uh, predetermined formulas. If you do need to make an entry, I'd do that on the journal entry tab, which I'll get to in a, in a second. But by having this auto, this accounting impact auto calculated, this is how the trial balance. I'll just go ahead and hide this again. That's how the trial balance and the balance sheet and income statement automatically get get populated. Just hide these again. So that's sales, bills, and expenses. Very similar. Go ahead and enter your the expense or the bill. Select the expense category. So that's how it'll show up on the income statement, the amount, tax rate, taxes owed, which will automatically be calculated based on the tax rate. Total due, amount that you've paid. So you might have terms that, you know, with those who, you know, you, you've purchased off of. So you can just put in how much you paid and then the remaining balance due. And similar to, as I mentioned on the sales and AR tab, you're going to have this like accounting section. There we go. You're going to have this accounting section that shows the impact. But again, that's just for your information. I wouldn't be modifying those, those values. And then up top, you'll see the, the chart of month over month expenses and then expenses by category. Okay, the next tab, I've broken out inventory purchases. So I brought in low stock items and high stock items for your reference. And this is where you can track any kind of purchases of inventory. You select the vendor or supplier product quantity in, and then just go through the motions of filling out the rest of this information. And as I mentioned, that would flow over to the inventory management tab. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through the journal entries tab next, actually. So as I mentioned, if you do need to make any manual adjustments, I do that here in the journal entries tab. So everything's automated, so you shouldn't need to go in here. But if you do need to make like, for example, you're amortizing an asset or depreciation, depreciating an asset or something to that extent or prepaid expenses, you can go in here, enter the, enter the journal entry, select the debit account, the credit account, and then this will auto-populate into the trial balance, balance sheet, and profit and loss statement. Accordingly, again, I would only populate this if you know what you're doing here from a journal entry standpoint. Otherwise, I would just stick to the automated entries, input entries. Bank reconciliation. So let me talk about the input section first. So first thing here, you can see bank statement and you can see all the transactions. This is where you would populate all of your bank transactions. Let's say from your checking account, credit card, so on and so forth with the spend and receive columns. So you would go in and enter this information and it's going to calculate, auto-calculate your opening balance, 
what you've spent slash received and your closing balance for cash. And this is over the year, over your fiscal year. So you can see here data from Jan 1st to December 31st. That's brought in automatically from your fiscal year start and end. So it's an annual ongoing reconciliation. So that's the information from your bank statement. And then over here on the right-hand side, this is the data brought in from your cash account. These um, equations up top or formulas are auto-calculated, so don't worry about that. And same with this data. This data is automatically brought in. So you, as you enter sales data, expense data, purchases of inventory, this is automatically brought in. It's split up by inventory purchases, bills and expenses, and cash in from, from sales and AR. So in terms of your task, you pretty much just need to go through your bank statement here and match it up to the corresponding entry here and say that you know, you've know you reconciled that particular amount. So it's for your own reference in terms of the actual cash reconciliation. As you're going through and doing the reconciliation, you'll see the bank balance, which is taking the closing balance of your bank statement and then the closing balance of your cash account from here, and then signaling whether you uh, are reconciled or, or not. Okay, so already went through the here, the journal entries tab. Tax summary. So based on all of the sales that you've made, you're going to see a section here on sales tax payable because you've essentially collected this tax from a customer. So you're going to have to remit that back. And then tax expense, so any kind of expenses or taxes you've paid on expenditures or purchases that you can track here. So you can see how much you've collected versus actually spent for your own purposes. And so you have that reference for, for tax purposes. Okay, and then as you've, you're kind of going through and entering all this information, the trial balance is auto-populating. So you can see it's brought over all of the asset accounts, liability, revenue, equity, revenue, expense, with all the total debit balances and credit balances. I would just continuously, like as you're entering transactions, less so the automated transactions here, but like the journal entries, for example, if you are using that tab, I would continuously revisit the trial balance to make sure debt, total debits equal total credits, because that then drives the balance sheet and profit and loss statement. So just make sure that that is all balanced at all times. And then you've got the balance sheet showing your financial health as of, as of a certain date. So as of the end of this fiscal year, it's just sort of a running total of all of your, all of your assets, liabilities, equity for the year, uh, up, to, up, up until a certain point, I should say. And then the profit and loss statement, which tracks your income or revenue and expenses over the course of over the year. I've left a few of these, you, know, you can see here, I've left some space here and just just in case you bring in other expenses but yeah this will give you your total profit so all of this is totally automated once again all you really have to do is input information into really the sales and ar tab bills and expenses inventory purchases and then everything else should automatically populate for you and then of course from a setup standpoint your customers enter your customers opening balances on your accounts and then just outline or input any products that or products and services that you're actually selling. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This is going to give you sort of a full comprehensive sort of bookkeeping slash finance template for your business. And as I said, like it's going to auto populate the analytics tab as well, where you're going to have this data refreshed in real time and handy for decision making purposes. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you enjoyed the template.